on this feast of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, there are two things that I want us to wrestle with today. First is the very fact that we call Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Lord meaning that there is only an up room for one Lord in our life. One that we give our entire self to, our entire being to. But we have to ask ourselves, there are so many different things out there which try to claim that Lord spot. And by the way that we live our lives can consume our entire lives in almost an unhealthy type of way because we give our entire life to that and can kind of compartmentalize our Lord Jesus Christ as far as just, well, that's just something I do on Sunday or that's just one part of my life, my religious life but my life is consumed with something other. The Lord of popularity. I want everybody to see how friendly I am, how many friends I can get, and I'm going to do anything for that. The Lord is my job. I will do anything to get a promotion. The Lord of my life is money. His success is prestige. Or there can be simpler things like hobbies that we like to do in our free time, we like to go golfing. But when our entire life is consumed around when is the next time that I can go golfing? When is the next time I'm gonna have a drink? I'm gonna have this or that. Our entire life gets consumed around another sort of lordship that we fall almost a slave to, ignoring completely our lord. There is only one room for one lord in our life. And we ask ourselves, where is our detraction? Are we giving ourselves fully to him, the Lord? But when we find out who the Lord is, the next thing we wrestle with, the next thing that we wrestle with is the fact that our Lord, King of the universe. And once we think about kingship, our mind can go in all sorts of places because we get obsessed with kingship in our in our world, the royal family. We want to know, you know, what kind of palace they live in, what their lifestyle is like, what kind of dog they got. We're very obsessed with the princes because royalty is, is really something like Big Shot. They're in all the magazines, the People magazine, they start the trends. But what did we just hear in the gospel about what this, our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of the universe is? Someone who is beaten, someone who is scourged, somebody hanging on a tree, being yelled at, being jeered, being spit at. This is the image of kingship that we're given in the gospel today. So to wrestle with the Lord of our lives, consuming our entire being, to Christ the King, the small, the forgotten, the marginalized, the seemingly abandoned, that King is the one that rules our lives, that rules the universe. And Christ the King, as we know by our faith, is all around us. God has made presence has made present to us in people. People as the hands and feet of Jesus Christ here on earth. And are we too obsessed with our own version of lordship or our own version of kingship that we ignore Christ the King of the universe, which is in our midst? Which are the meek, which are the humble of heart which might not be the most popular, which might give their entire lives for lordship, but they might be in such a quiet way that we don't even see them or recognize them. They're all over the world. Jesus Christ is indeed in our midst. Christ the King, Christ King of the universe. But sometimes our eyes aren't wide, open wide enough to recognize where he is, in the beaten, the forgotten, the lonely. But of course, he tells us point blank at the end of the gospel. Today you will be with me in paradise. When we do give ourselves to him, we can recognize him and fully claim him again as our Lord. It helps us change a little bit of our habits. Realizing that these things are not the end all, that only he is. And if we can recognize how he is as king, then we too, in our kingly role by the nature of our very baptism. We have been anointed priest, prophet, and king. And by our kingship, it's not showing everybody what a big shot we are. 
It's all servant leadership in humble service of what we do to show how we are king. Very countercultural, very reversal of what we think of kingship in our world today. It's a challenge, but it's worth it. Eternal life is worth it. The eternal dwelling place of God, the great kingdom of God, which of course we think of gigantic castles and gold, but this kingdom of God is something not that we can't even imagine. It's going to be so wonderful, just not in our own human terms. So may we claim again once more at this end of the liturgical year that we indeed, everything that we have done in this liturgical year has built up to this moment when we again claim as a church that we are not slaves to human things, we are slaves to him, Christ, King of the universe, and we give everything to him. And next week as we start our Advent season, there's going to be a little mood shift. There's not going to be the incense that we'll use today. There's not going to be the, the, the boisterous hymns of celebrating Christ the King. Now we move to more of a somber time of waiting and preparation. Because the King is in the small, and we're moving towards that to realize that that's how Jesus Christ indeed chose to come among us, was in the small type of way as a baby. And we're going to be shifting our, our mood a little bit to welcome that. So the end of the liturgical year ends on a great high note. And the next year we kind of move in to recognize Jesus in a little bit different way. So it's an adventure we all do this together. So we celebrate today Christ the King, and we claim him as the Lord of our lives.